Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Autoblog. When we feature subcompact crossovers on the channel, I think a lot of people would just look at these vehicles as being affordable and practical at a price range around $30,000. They don't really expect to receive great performance or interior quality or even technology that we find in compact and mid-sized crossovers. And a lot of brands are not going to put a lot of development into these vehicles simply to keep them affordable, especially for most people who are on a budget. However, the Hyundai Kona is a really important vehicle for the brand moving forward. Yes, it's affordable and practical, also more versatile than a hatchback. But for Hyundai, it's also an EV. So as we all know, EVs are the future, and Hyundai is really putting a lot of emphasis on the Kona to be a part of that future while also being a great vehicle in the present. You've probably already noticed that there's some changes to the exterior, as the front fascia looks more aggressive and streamlined. However, we're only getting started with these changes for this model year, as the interior is all new and we have some great technology that we just don't find in some competitors. Now typically, when you step inside a subcompact crossover, there's not a lot of excitement. There's nothing to write home about. There's a lot left to be desired. However, in the 2022 model year for the Hyundai Kona, and today we have a limited, you have a nice interior layout, you also have a driving experience that I believe is unrivaled and a lot of technology features that I think will impress a lot of consumers at this price point. So in this video, we're going to take a good long look at the 2022 Hyundai Kona, see how it compares to last model year and how it compares to other vehicles in this segment, and also see why if you're frustrated with the subcompact crossover market in general, as most vehicles just don't provide a great driving experience, interior quality, or technology, then maybe going with a 2022 Hyundai Kona might be a great decision. Now before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to McGovern Hyundai in Brockton, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Hyundai inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. There was once a time when you'd look at Hyundai and say that they were behind the Hondas and Toyotas of the world, or that their vehicles just weren't cutting edge enough to compete with the powerhouse automotive brands. Today, this Korean manufacturer continues to surprise and turn heads with a growing lineup, all sporting futuristic and aggressive styling, while also providing exceptional performance, enhanced safety features, and arguably some of the best technology you'll find in this price range and market. The Hyundai Kona's recent arrival to the subcompact crossover segment has been met with immediate success, becoming one of the hottest sellers within two years. And the changes they've made to the 2022 model year just might propel this vehicle to new heights. Starting off with pricing, the Hyundai Kona Limited comes in at $29,650, with all-wheel drive being equipped on this model. For the 2022 lineup, there's been a reshuffling of the trim levels, as the Ultimate is no longer offered, and instead, the Limited will take its place as being the most expensive and well-equipped trim, excluding the all-new Kona N. The argument could always be made that the Kona wasn't necessarily a true subcompact crossover, as exterior dimensions, ground clearance, and even driving dynamics were more reflective of being a lifted hatchback, and Hyundai is continuing to double down on those characteristics by providing a performance variant, ushering in a new era for this segment, as we've never seen a brand attempt to draw in a car enthusiast demographic for this market. Taking a look at the exterior, the 2022 Kona receives a significant facelift, as it now looks sleeker and aggressive compared to the outgoing model. You're also going to notice that the dark gray cladding has become far more dominant, especially for the lower portion of the front bumper. However, it no longer outlines the headlights, and instead wraps around the entire front fender to add some continuity to the overall design. For buyers who aren't fans of the off-road look, the all-new N-Line trim will have a full paint finish, completely transforming this subcompact crossover into a youthful and fun vehicle that should attract younger buyers. Adding some contrast up front, the gloss black grille design is a welcoming sight as it helps elevate the appearance of the Kona. And as we saw with the pre-facelift models, the LED DRLs and headlights are separate, fitting right in with other vehicles in the lineup that share the same cosmetic design feature. Moving over to the side profile, 
the Limited will be sitting on 18-inch alloy wheels, providing a premium ride quality, as the Kona suspension can surprisingly handle bumps and imperfections in the road very well, giving drivers a high-quality experience behind the wheel. You'll have body color folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, you have to look real close to notice the differences compared to last year. However, just like we saw up front, the LED taillights have been enhanced for the 2022 model to give the Kona a more upscale road presence. And as we've seen with Hyundai products in the past, the turn signal indicators are mounted closer to the rear bumper rather than being housed with the taillights. It's the rear third of the Kona where you see the crossover-like designs as it does sit a bit higher and has similar aesthetics to the Subaru Crosstrek. But ultimately, the hatchback roofline is going to play a factor when we check out the interior, as this vehicle isn't the most spacious option in this segment. Under the hood, the Hyundai Kona Limited is powered by a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that puts out 195 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque, and is paired with the seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. With this subcompact crossover taking on a new role of being sporty and athletic with the N-Line and Kona N, you're going to find that the Limited will offer the same agility, being far more fun than its closest rivals, who for the most part use CVTs. It should be noted that for the SE and SEL trims, you'll have a 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine that puts out 147 horsepower, and you'll also have a 6-speed automatic transmission but the recommended choice will be to pay a little more to receive better overall performance. For fuel economy, you can expect to receive a combined average of around 30 miles per gallon. Stepping inside, you're given by a refreshed interior that builds off the simplicity from prior model years, but this time around having an injection of modern day technology that up to this point, we rarely see in this segment. By opting for the Limited, you'll have heated leather trim seats for both the driver and passenger, with the driver's side being power adjustable, whereas passengers will have to mainly find the ideal seating position. While not heavily bolstered, they do provide a good amount of support and comfort to keep you relaxed on longer drives. Once behind the wheel, your eyes will gravitate immediately to the fully digital gauge cluster that we find in the Tucson and Santa Fe, but more impressive is that Hyundai is still providing a high resolution screen which adds a sense of quality and upscale feel to the interior. From here, you can scroll through a variety of information, including your turn-by-turn -turn navigation, tire pressure monitoring, and fuel efficiency. Moving over to the infotainment system, all new is a 10.2-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation and the Harman Kardon sound system which is going to give us the Sounds of Nature feature that's becoming common in new Kia and Hyundai products. Once again, just like with the digital gauges, this is technology not typically found in vehicles priced at $30,000. And what we're experiencing with the new Kona could very well change the subcompact cross of a market moving forward. For consumers who prefer a more analog layout, you will have quick access buttons found just beneath the screen to conveniently get you to different menus. And of course, you will have physical dials for the volume and tuning knobs. When using the touchscreen exclusively, responsiveness and resolution is what you'd expect from luxury brands. And even better is that this is the same user interface found in the Tucson and Santa Fe to really give drivers the perception of being in a more expensive vehicle. Of course, you will have a rear backup camera with trajectory. And you'll also have sensors to let you know if you're getting too close to a stationary object. Below, you'll find the buttons and dials for your climate control settings, including the AC and front and rear defrosters. As you work our way down towards the center console, the Limited will have a wireless phone charging pad, and you'll also have a USB input and 12 volt outlet. Next to the gear shifter, you'll find a small dial for your drive mode selector, where you can choose between Smart, Normal, and Sport, with each mode affecting throttle response and steering input. It's also here where the buttons for the three-level heated seats can be found. And overall, while the interior is a bit minimalistic compared to the bigger crossovers in the lineup, everything is within arm's reach to make the interior very user-friendly. For the center storage compartment, you'll have enough room for smaller items. 
and rounding out the front seating area, above will be a power moonroof to let in some natural light to the interior. Now for passengers in the back, we're going to start off on the driver's side, and this seat is adjusted to someone of my head around 5'5", and I have plenty of legroom to work with here. Now, of course, I'm not the tallest person out there, but if you are a shorter driver and you have a taller passenger, I think they're going to be very comfortable. Now, of course, when it comes to headroom, that's where it becomes a bit of an issue. And for most vehicles in this segment, you're going to have a lower roof line just because it really is a lifted hatchback. It's, it, it's considered a crossover, but it doesn't have the crossover dimensions, in my opinion. So definitely keep that in mind. I think if you're on the height of 5'8 or 5'9, you could sit back here pretty comfortably. But anyone over the height of 5'10, it could get very claustrophobic very quickly. Now, for the center seat, and as I always say with most vehicles in this segment, is that it's just not going to be practical to fit a third person back here at all. Now, I do have some good placements for my feet, but shoulder room is going to be the major concern just because this vehicle isn't very wide. It's a subcompact crossover. So most likely, you're just going to have two people back here for sure. I don't even think trying to fit a third kid back here is practical at all. Then for the passenger side, the seat is adjusted most of the way back. It's also on a recline. And I still have a few inches of legging to work with here, which is a major relief because I did a quick walk around of the Kona just to check out everything and see all the features. And I was eyeing the second row seating situation. I'm like, could this actually be comfortable for someone even at my height? And most certainly, I think if you're on the height of 5'6 or 5'7, you could sit back here very comfortably, especially where most likely the passenger seat is not going to be adjusted this far back. So I think this vehicle is definitely more conducive for someone who is living in the city, doesn't have a family, doesn't use a second row seats that often. And even if you do, it's going to be more suitable for just two people in the second row rather than three. Also back here, you will have a small little compartment for some change to go along with the USB input. Now, of course, we do not have two rear air vents. We normally don't see that in this segment or price range. And rounding out, the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive right around 19 cubic feet of rear cargo space, which isn't class leading by any means. In fact, I would argue the Kona is more like a lifted hatchback when it comes to dimensions. So this would fall right in line with the Mazda CX-30, but does fall a bit short when compared to other vehicles in this segment. Then with the second row seats folded, that space doubles in size to right around 45 and a half cubic feet. So overall, what you're working with here is a vehicle that's better suited for an urban lifestyle or for someone who does not have a family. So I have plenty of room for my camera gear and groceries and smaller items. But I think if you're going on a road trip with the family or you just have more of an active lifestyle, you're going to want to go with the Tucson or Santa Fe for sure. But if you are someone that's a bit younger, that's buying their first ever new vehicle, then I think the Kona is going to provide just enough practicality for what you need it for. Then beneath the floor mat, you're going to find a spare tire, which is great to see because a lot of brands are going away from this. And if you do encounter a flat on your journeys or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. Also made the floor mat, you will have a small little compartment. Maybe you'd fit a smartphone or a tablet. Maybe you're at the beach or something like that and you want to leave all your electronics where someone can't see them, then this would be perfect for that. Also, you're going to have a rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear with you or anything of value, you can leave them back here and you'll have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and seal what you have. And then once you're done, just grab the handle and close the hatch. All right, so let's take the new 2022 Hyundai Kona out for a test drive to see how it performs, how it handles, how it drives, and how it compares to other subcompact crossovers on the market today in this price range. Now for the 2022 model year, I would argue that there have been some major changes for the Hyundai Kona, even though from the exterior it's been a minor facelift I gotta tell you, the technology that you have here inside this vehicle is pretty top-notch stuff, and what we've seen from other Hyundai vehicles that we've reviewed so far over the last three to four months. And I would say that this is miles ahead of what we're finding in other subcompact crossovers. A full digital display, we have a nice infotainment system. This is pretty rare, especially at this price point. 
Now, I gotta be completely honest here. When I film subcompact crossovers, they're not always the most enjoyable to drive or inspiring. Uh, it does take quite a bit to get excited uh, to feature these vehicles. But with the Hyundai Kona, I have a turbocharged four cylinder engine under the hood and it's paired with a dual clutch automatic transmission. This vehicle is speaking my language. And when it comes to the performance, when it comes to accelerations, you don't get the droning since there is no CVT and it performs pretty well. When it comes to city driving, it's very relaxing and smooth, and steering is pretty nice and direct. It's not too tight. Uh, of course, I am in comfort mode, so it's not going to have the most aggressive steering, but for most drivers, I think this is a pretty nice ride. And that's been one of the issues that a lot of brands have been having with subcompact crossovers because they don't have the best performance. They don't have the best interior quality. They don't have the best features. And what Hyundai has given us here with the 2022 Kona is a really enjoyable driving experience and a comfortable one at that. Everything's really smooth. And at least for city driving or suburban driving, uh, the interior is very well insulated and very quiet. So I like this uh, driving experience so far. Now, one thing that's really standing out to me is the fact that drivers will have a full digital display in front of them if they go with the limited. And that is very rare to see in this segment. A lot of brands are still using analog gauges. And this really adds to somewhat of an entry-level luxury experience. Now, for a vehicle around $30,000, you'd never say it's entry-level luxury. But I gotta be honest, you have the technology to work with here that we have found in the new Tucson and Santa Fe. Also, the nice leather wrapped steering wheel feels really nice in the hands, uh, very premium, and that is not something that we normally see in this segment. I just think that overall what Hyundai has done here is that they've made a vehicle that could very well be a bestseller within about a year or so just with what you have to work with. Now, of course, it's not the biggest vehicle, not the most practical when it comes to rear cargo space, but when it comes to the overall package, I have not found many vehicles at this price range that's offering the same thing that Hyundai has right here. I think, to be honest, the only vehicle that is standing in the Kona's way would be the Mazda CX-30, especially with a turbo. Uh, but Hyundai has got you covered there because they're coming out with an N. So uh, I really like what Hyundai is doing right here. They're making the, the subcompact crossover market very appealing. And as a journalist, as a car reviewer that's reviewed plenty of subcompact crossovers, uh, even within about 10 minutes, I am fully engaged behind the wheel, and that is not something I normally say with most vehicles at this price point. Now, of course, when it comes to interior layout, it's not going to be as luxurious or as detailed as we've seen with the Tucson and also the Santa Fe, but that is completely okay just because, again, most vehicles in this segment are going to be lacking some of the creature comfort. It's going to be lacking that, that luxury experience, but I love the updated infotainment system, and I really just love the simplicity of the interior as well. I think buyers are going to love this vehicle for sure. Now, since we are getting on the highway, I have put the Kona in sport mode and it definitely gets more aggressive. But what I will say though, and I'm starting to notice this a lot more with non-Japanese brands and even some non-German brands, is that steering doesn't tighten up aggressively. And I don't mind that. It's actually very agile with the cornering and that stands out to me. I want a vehicle that's responsive and I don't wanna have that fake feeling of tight steering uh, where you put it in sport mode and all of a sudden it just gets very aggressive. I don't like that, especially for non-performance vehicles, but this is pretty impressive. Not bad, not bad at all. Of course, you're not gonna be breaking any speed records and if you do wanna have that performance, you're gonna go with the N, but this turbocharged four-cylinder engine does the job, and also, more importantly, no CVT. And I am so thankful. I want to see that transmission go away. <laughs> you know, if you can give us a vehicle that is efficient without giving us a CVT, I'll be very happy for sure. Now, road noise on the highway, you can definitely hear it for sure. Obviously, this is not going to be uh, you know, a top trim Tucson or Santa Fe, so definitely keep that in mind. But I just think that when it comes to how this vehicle is handling and performing, it's definitely better than the competition for sure. Braking feel, you don't need to get too deep into the brake pedal to stop this vehicle. Now you will feel 
the body roll, even at around 40 miles an hour, and that's to be expected. This does not have sports tuned suspension. And I think all the things that I could nitpick about this crossover would be fixed with the N, so just keep that in mind. Because you could argue, well, it does need a little more horsepower, it needs more performance, but with the Kona N, you're gonna have around 280 horsepower to work with. I don't have the spreadsheet with me, uh, so I, I hope that I'm correct on that. But also you have a, a eight-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission that we find in the Veloster N. So you're gonna have more of that sporty experience that would make me feel and make me say that I think the Kona could be the crossover version of a Volkswagen GTI. And that's what I've been waiting for uh, because I've been trying to find vehicles that are crossovers, that are more practical, that are affordable, that would be a crossover version of what Volkswagen has with the GTI. And I simply just can't find one. Uh, I think the Mazda CX-3 would be the closest to that. But I'm beginning to think that Hyundai has something here with the Kona where it could be very popular with a younger consumer demographic and also enthusiasts as well. I'm really looking forward to that vehicle. I cannot wait for the Kona N to arrive at uh, the dealerships just so that I can experience it. Uh, because what I'm experiencing right here with the regular Kona is a really fun and engaging driving experience that I think a lot of buyers are going to love just because when you're tooling around town, you're gonna to have a vehicle that's responsive, that's fun, and for most people who would be buying this, might be more of a younger buyer uh, that's living in the city, they're gonna love this for sure over some of the competition that has a CVT, like the Honda HRV or the Toyota CHR or uh, the Subaru Crosstrek. It might not be as off-road versatile as the Crosstrek, but when it comes to city driving or suburban driving, I think it's actually better. And we're seeing that with this vehicle. Uh, Americans are really responding to what the Kona is offering, and it's become an overnight success since it arrived at dealers about two years ago. And what they've done for this mid-cycle refresh is substantially change this vehicle and improve it to now, really, I would say, might be one of the best subcompact crossovers at around $30,000. But what I absolutely love with this vehicle is the fact that we have a digital gauge cluster. And most brands don't even offer that for compact crossovers. So to me, Hyundai is really focused on giving buyers a premium driving experience. And also for consumers that are really uh, on a strict budget, they're gonna have that feeling that, you know what, at around $30,000, I'm receiving quite a lot. It might not be the most practical vehicle, but if I'm looking for a subcompact crossover, no one else in this market is giving me this. And that's why I feel that Hyundai it really could be a leader in about a year or two, just when you start looking at their lineup, when you start looking at what they're doing when it comes to technology, and even electrification and hybrid technology. Uh, they're definitely uh, in the conversation for sure to be one of the best brands in this segment. And what we're starting to see with the Korean brands in general is just more of a premium and upscale uh, driving experience and quality. And I mean, there was once a time where you could look at Hyundai and Kia and you're like, well, you're not really getting a lot. They're just affordable vehicles. But now I would argue that they're better than Toyota and Honda, at least in this segment for sure, especially with the Kona. I'm really digging this. But overall though, I am really truly impressed what Hyundai has done here with the Kona. It's smooth, it's agile, it's quiet, it's relaxing, and also it handles the New England roads pretty well. So really, I don't know how much, what, what more you could ask for at around $30,000. Of course, uh, you know, some people would say, well, I want more performance. Well, you have the Kona N, which should be arriving sometime later this year. So if you're looking for more of an aggressive driving experience, go with the Kona N. If you're looking for just a great all-around daily driver that is affordable, that's compact, so that you don't have to worry about parking this vehicle in tight spots in the city, and you're just looking for a really high-quality vehicle, and I think the 2022 Kona is the way to go for sure. But after this test drive, and this is gonna be a very bold statement from me, the Hyundai Kona might be one of the best vehicles I have featured so far when it comes to the driving experience. And we're about five months into the year, so there's plenty of time left for 2021 to surprise me and other brands to give me a great driving experience. But I think 
when you look at the price point, when you look at the interior quality, the features and the technology, really, I mean, when you look at the competition, like I said earlier, I think the only vehicle that really is staying in, in the Kona's way to being one of the best in this segment would be the Mazda CX-30. And I'm gonna stick by that. So at the end of the day, I'm really enthusiastic about the 2022 Hyundai Kona, as it defies all logic and preconceived notions that we've had about this segment up to this point. Because the argument would always be that if you gave a subcompact crossover, technology and comfort features, it would then be priced around thirty-five dollars to $40,000. Well, Hyundai has given us a vehicle that has a full digital gauge cluster, an updated infotainment system, a clean laid out dashboard, a wireless phone charging pad, the Harman Kardon audio system, a nice interior, and all-wheel drive for around $32,000, which is absolutely remarkable. We just don't see that right now in this segment, and as I've said numerous times, I think the only crossover that would be very comparable to what the Kona is offering would be the Mazda CX-30. Besides that, I can't really find another subcompact crossover that I would choose over the Mazda CX-30 or the Hyundai Kona, especially after this test drive but also when it comes to performance. You have a nice turbocharged four-cylinder engine under the hood. You also have a dual-clutch transmission, and that's way better than the CVTs found in the Subaru Crosstrek, Honda HRV, and Toyota CHR. Now, of course, the Hyundai Kona is not the most practical or spacious vehicle in this segment. However, I do think that when you look at the overall value this vehicle provides, it's certainly better than its closest rivals. And that's why, as I said at the end of the test drive, that you can cross shop this vehicle with its closest competitors. However, I think you're gonna come back to the Kona just because when you look at the technology, when you look at the comfort, when you look at the infotainment system and just the overall dynamics that we have here to work with, including the performance, there's just not another subcompact crossover outside the Mazda CX-30 that in my mind truly competes with what Hyundai has to offer here at around $30,000. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.